Hi! So today we're going to talk about the very basic anatomy of the skull. I'm going to guide you through the different bones that the skull consists of and we're also going to talk about the cranial cavity. So the skull consists of 22 bones, excluding the three ossicles located in the middle ear. These bones of the skull are immobile and are attached to each other by sutures to form the cranium. So the human skull consists of the two main parts, the neurocranium color coded here in the blue and the viscerocranium color coded here in the orange. The neurocranium encloses the brain and sensory organs connected to it and it can be further subdivided into the cranial calvaria and the cranial base. The viscerocranium is the part located anterior to the neurocranium and it forms the so-called facial skeleton. And as I mentioned earlier, the neurocranium can be further subdivided into the calvaria and the cranial base. The calvaria main, is mainly formed by the parietal bones, you can see here and here, by the squamous part of the frontal bone, and also a little bit by the occipital bones and the most superior parts of the squamous part of the temporal bone. The cranial base, however, is mainly formed by the sphenoid bone, you can see here and also here, by temporal bone and by the occipital bones. So the neurocranium consists of bones that are in direct contact with the brain. Four of these bones are single bones and two are paired. The unpaired bones of the neurocranium are the frontal bone that you can see here, the sphenoid bone that you can see here, and the occipital bone that you can see here, and also the eth ethmoid bone that you can see here on the medial wall of the orbit, here. The paired bones of the neurocranium are the temporal bone, that you can see here, and the parietal bones, that you can see here, and here, from the right side. So the visceral cranium is formed by six paired and three unpaired bones. The paired bones of the visceral cranium are the maxillary bones, that you can see here, and here, the zygomatic bones or cheekbones you can see here and also here, the palatine bones that you can see here and here, and also the lacrimal bones that you can see here on the medial wall of the orbit and here. Then we also have the nasal bones, located here in the midline. And then we have inferior nasal concha, which you can see here on the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Now we look closer into the nasal cavity, we have one more single bone located here in the midline, and it's called the vomer. And the last bone that we have is the mandible or the lower jaw that you can see here. The bones of the skull are separated from each other by sutures. Some of the sutures of the calvary have specific names. Cranial sutures fuse with advancing age, whereas the facial strata sutures usually remain open. So now we're going to look at some of these sutures and we're going to start by looking at the glabella region. This line here is a remnant of a metopic suture, a suture rarely seen in adults as it fuses in childhood, but it occasionally can be seen as a remnant like this in adults as well. 
So now we're continuing to the coronal suture, color-coded here in the red. The coronal suture lies between the frontal bone and both of these parietal bones. Now, this purple line is the sagittal suture. The sagittal suture lies between both of the parietal, bo uh, parietal bones, the left and right parietal bone. Now, as we move forward to the posterior aspect of the skull, we see this, this line here in blue. This is the lambda suture and it is located between both of the parietal bones and the occipital bone. Now this line here, this is the squamos squamosal suture and it is located between the parietal bone and the temporal bone, both on the left side and on the right side. And in the last part of our today's lecture, we're going to talk about the cranial cavity, which is the space within the cranium that contains the brain, the meninges, the proximal parts of the cranial nerves, blood vessels, and cranial venous sinuses. The cranial cavity has a roof, the calvaria, which we already spoke about. Let's remember that the calvaria is mainly formed by the parietal bones and the squamous part of the frontal bone. We also spoke about the cranial base. And now we're going to be looking at the floor of the cranial cavity, which can be further divided into three fossae, the anterior, middle, and posterior. So now we're looking at the anterior cranial fossa, which is formed by parts of the frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid bones. Its floor is composed of anterior anterolaterally by the frontal bone, which you can see here, and here we have the ethmoid bone at the midline, and then we have two bones of the sphenoid bone. We have the lesser wings of the sphenoid here, and the body of the sphenoid here in the midline. So now we're looking at the middle cranial fossa that consists of parts of the sphenoid and temporal bones. The boundary between the anterior and the middle cranial fossa is the prehismatic sulcus, a tiny groove between these two optic canals located here in the midline. The posterior boundaries of the middle cranial fossa are formed by the anterior surface and the high superior surface uh, of the petrous, petrous part of the temporal bone that you can see here and here. And last but not least, now we're looking at the posterior cranial fossa, which is formed by the parts of the temporal bones, which you can see here, and mainly by the occipital bone. 